How do you feel about the, the, the health of your guys here entering camp? Any notable injuries or uh, any position changes here going into camp? Yeah, um, we're probably 99% uh, healthy. Nothing that um, uh, that we're really concerned about uh, with that other 1%. Hopefully, um, within the first couple of weeks, we'll, we'll have everybody uh, ready to go. But I feel great um, about the health of our team, You know the, the gains that we've made uh, in the weight room, our strength, our size. Um, we have a bunch of guys that have PR'd uh, through the course of the summer and of uh, trimmed up, lost body fat, gained muscle, you know, mission accomplished. So uh, I think our guys are in a really uh, good, confident, uh, strong position going into camp. Any uh, position changes? Position changes? Like anybody's <coughs> shifted uh, position since uh, in the spring? I mean, defensive guys stayed on defense. Offensive guys stayed on offense. Um, you know, we might have some guys that played tackle moving inside or guys inside playing a little bit outside, but no. nothing major. No, no. Uh, Bob Brisbillo, front row. Yeah, Brent, you've talked about Josh Eaton at media days. You've mentioned Marcus Stripling before back in the spring, and it's not so much our development on the field, but off off the field. Like, how tough are those conversations to have, those heart-to-heart -heart conversations, and how much benefit do you have after it because you've gone through that? I don't think the conversations are hard at all. Um, you know, people know your motives, um, and you have relationships that are built. I think the con conversations are very easy. And um, uh, I think in order to create change, uh, there's got to be awareness, there's got to be action, and then there's got to be accountability. And uh, for us as a staff, uh, and it just could be changing anything, like, you know, uh, whether it has to do with football or not. But, you know, there's a real transformation that takes place when these young guys, you know, come here and they go to college. And um, there's a maturation process that we've got to help facilitate, you know. And um, so uh, that's part of it. That's actually one of the funnest parts of it, to, to be, you know, intimately involved with that um, you know, change and um, and try to help them accomplish, you know, all of their goals. And, um, but you got to have awareness, and then you got to put together a plan of action, and, and then you got to have accountability. You know, after that. So, again, I don't, I don't see um, the difficultness of, or the difficulty of, of, you know, having those conversations. That's part of, of uh, helping them take them to places that they can't, you know, go on their own. Eric Bailey, Good morning, Brent. Um, we talked a lot about offense and defense going into fall camp. I wanted to ask you about special teams. Just your thoughts going into fall camp, uh, a little bit about the kicker situation, and then Michael Turk, uh, he had a great year last year. Just expectations for him? Yeah, um, I'm really excited. I, I, you know, through the course of the spring, um, for us, whether it um, our, our long snappers, uh, short snappers or for a field goal, our uh, Turk, um, our battle uh, going on at, at the place kicker. I've, we felt really good um, with consistency. Um, you know, Turk is uh, the model of exactly that. He's a, a pro in every way um, in regards to his mindset and work that he puts in every day. Uh, you know, he's an over-deliverer when it comes to um, you know, uh, managing his time the right way and, and then bringing out the best in others. He's, he, he leads the whole uh, group of specialists. Um, and uh, he's tough and he's demanding. Uh, and um, place kicker, you know, I, I really like the battle that we have there. Um, again, through the course of the spring, putting the ball deep into the end zone uh, or, again, the, the place kicking uh, battle, you know, you know, I'm excited to go into the fall, uh, you know, watching that play out. And um, and our coaches, I've, I've complimented them. I don't, I'm not one to throw a whole bunch of compliments out, but I complimented uh, them, you know, through our uh, elite meetings here the last week, just in regards to um, the focused uh, approach uh, that our guys have had and uh, the energy and the enthusiasm that they got out of our guys. Uh, 
um, organization, the detail, uh, all of those types of things was really spot on. So I'm uh, anxious to watch, you know, the, the variety of uh, competitions and development, you know, with some of our new personnel uh, to add uh, to the group that we have. Mm -hmm. Coach, what are the uh, a couple of the biggest things that you believe that you need to get accomplished here in the next 30 days to be ready to go play? You know, I would just say to continue to build on, you know, the momentum that we had through uh, spring ball in the course of the summer. You know, we've, we've spent, um, me personally, uh, spent more time with the players in the summertime more than – uh, than I ever have and uh, we as a staff I'm not sure what guys have done I don't want to speak for other coaches but what we uh, what we decided to do collectively you know you got to split it up you know between you get eight hours a week so uh, we chose to continue to educate and develop our guys uh, uh, you know with the X's and the O's and the fundamentals and things of that nature so we spent a little bit more time to try to Again, continue to create momentum and confidence and those types of things going into, you know, to the season. So, again, it's very simple in regards to, you know, expectations every day to, uh, you know, put one in front of the other uh, in, from a development standpoint and improving, uh, getting guys, uh, again, continue to build their confidence, their assuredness, their aggressiveness through, uh, through the work that we put in. And, uh, but... Uh, just, I mean, again, a daily focus of improvement, you know, more than anything else. You know, we're constantly developing mindset and trying to create vision for what we want uh, our guys um, to focus on. And uh, I think that in order for us to really um, uh, to be at our best, we've got to create a vision for what we want, uh, you know, the season to look like um, positionally. Um, as a unit and certainly as a football team. So we've worked hard to try to do exactly that, you know, create this vision. What's the target? What are we aiming at? Instead, oh, it's the season. You know, some of it, you know, is centered on your, your opener, you know, to try to, you know, continue to buy in. It's one game at a time. And it literally is that. And most important, you know, game of the year. And, um, uh, you know, all the work that goes into having a great season, you want to, you know, develop and create a catalog of 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 depth of you know uh, understanding and try to build as much. We, you know, the thing that we have going against us is we have this lack of experience um, in the new schemes and some guys in playing college football and certainly playing football here at Oklahoma. So, what can we do to try to bridge that gap? And so we've worked really hard and intentional trying to bridge that gap to create a level of comfort and uh, like a. Uh, we talked about um, at uh, Big 12 Media Days, you know, we have 40% of our roster that has never uh, taken a, a snap in an Oklahoma uniform. And um, so what uh, what can we do to help bridge that gap? And then, you know, to utilize a, a bunch of those guys that do have a, a tremendous amount of experience playing college football. So um, that was uh, with some of the transfers that we brought in. So. Um, how can we best utilize that experience? And so, um, you know, uh, those are things from a, an accomplished, what are we trying to get accomplished? And we, we want a confident, physical, tough, blue-collar work, you know, uh, work ethic type team coming out of, you know, fall camp. I want our guys to, to be incredibly confident through the work that we put in uh, over the last several months. And certainly fall camp is, is a huge part of that. And, um, you know, you, you continue to develop, you know, your fundamentals and uh, still maintain strength and all those types of things through fall camp with a good, detailed, organized schedule. And, uh, and again, our job is to bring them out, you know, better prepared than when we went into fall camp. And so a lot of intentionality that goes into that. All right, John Hoover. Uh, Brent, for a first-year head coach who's trying to establish what you want the program to look like, and I guess for a first-year staff, who's going out and recruiting, establishing those relationships. How important was this summer for you guys to lay the groundwork like you did the end of June, all through July, and obviously the start of August, uh, recruiting-wise, I'm talking about? Well, uh, really, that's our first opportunity other than the unofficial visits. You know, as we, we talked about, you're competing now. Once you get into the, 
into the month of June and, and um, the last part of July, but uh, but in June in particular uh, for official visits, you're competing to get guys on campus. So getting the right ones and again, having a narrow focus uh, through the course of the spring to figure out um, the guys that we really wanted to target, um, uh, guys that were great fit for you know how we're trying to build our program and uh, get them on campus and create a vision for them and their families. Uh, that they could buy into, um, have some uh, perseverance and endurance, uh, having that mindset. So I had to prepare uh, our staff to have exactly that. You know, there's a patience that goes with that, but also a, a game plan that you're ready to execute if things don't go uh, execute if things don't go your way. And um, uh, and then again, for for us to have long term commitment to try to encourage guys to get to a bunch of spots. Uh, so that they could really have um, peace and confirmation in, in their their final decision. So we really felt great that um, although maybe some other people got more commitments earlier, uh, that we would get the right ones at the right time um, that had the, the depth of, of uh, again, what commitment really looks like and uh, where it really had roots. Um, and, uh, and again, just because they commit doesn't mean everything's over. Uh, you know, for us, you got to continue to, uh, you know, recruit them, um, you know, like they're not committed, you know, uh, because you don't sign until December. Um, but you feel really good about, again, where we're at right now, having that, you know, now it's a dead period. And, uh, you know, as we get into our season and you start getting busy, how to manage all of that still, you know, recruiting doesn't end. So, um, but we feel uh, like we're in a really strong position that, every position across the board that uh, you know we've recruited and we're continuing to recruit uh, where we're at relationship wise uh, with these recruits and their families okay, second mm -hmm. row yeah coach you, you mentioned a lot of guys <laughs> putting big numbers up in the weight room and improving in that area are there maybe two or three guys that really just jump out at you in terms of that eye test that uh, showed you that they really put that work in you know I don't know. If, I just don't think it's uh, – I would do anybody at, you know, uh, I'm going to do some people some disservice if I don't bring guys up. But I would just say collectively, you'll see when you when you get a chance to see them. You might have seen some already. Um, you know, uh, a lot of guys have been, uh, you know, putting a lot of work in, and I think that you're, you're going to see a lot of improvement. Some of them are some young guys that maybe played the last year or so um, that didn't have as much time to develop that you're seeing really – um, them take off now, you know, to be a real transformation. Uh, but um, you know, we're going to have a uh, you know a weigh in here in a in a, in a couple of days, and uh, really be able to uh, we'll be able to put put some stuff out there where you'll see some guys and see the transformation that we're talking about uh, to highlight. Uh, but I I really just want to highlight our whole football team, and I'll uh, be honest, um, if I didn't feel like it was warranted, I certainly wouldn't promote it. But our guys have uh, have worked incredibly hard. They've invested um, like we've asked them to. And, you know, I think most teams around the country, I'm sure people can say that about their own team. But for us, um, I've seen, again, a, a great leadership through the course of the summer. Uh, again, a lot of sweat equity that's been put in uh, to this season. And um, I see our guys that are, are really confident right now um, because of the work that they've put in uh, more than anything else. So uh, really been pleased, proud of the guys, um, and a lot of things that they've done too that have been player-led uh, that, that I'm aware of that they've done as well that it's going to take that extra commitment. You know, uh, you can't just do the bare minimum, and there's got to be a consistency that goes along with it, and you're developing habits uh, you're developing culture, you're de developing mindset when you have uh, the player-led things that have been going on. So really impressed and, and pleased with um, where our guys are at, but, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically. Barry Trammell. Yeah, Brad, uh, sort of off subject, 30 years ago, you were a linebacker in Manhattan. Kale's a quarterback here. What do you remember him about him as a player? Yeah, really – Confident, um, talented, um, dual threat, uh, you know, highly recruited. And uh, I, remember, I remember we got that dub on him, too. 
windy day in Manhattan, Kansas. Uh, no, he's just a really talented, tough guy, ultra uh, competitor. Uh, you know, so face of you know the program. Years later, yeah, you know, no, yeah, we talk. Working together, and you, you yeah. work together a good chunk of your life. Yeah, no, and it's, you know, as I reminded our team uh, a few days ago, uh, prior to giving them a little break, um, your success in life is going to be, it, you know, you can, there's going to be a lot of uh, reasons that you have success in your life, but there's none that's more prevalent than it's going to go back to relationships that you have with people. You know, people are going to facilitate your, your success. People are going to be a part of your success. And um, uh, the relationships are going to be because of, you know, or your, rela- you know, your su- success is going to be because of those relationships. So it's always about people and you want to stay connected. A lot of guys, young people, immature, the line of thinking is I'm going to do this on my own. I can do life on my own. And success is going to be because of me. And, um, and, and this is a great example of what relationships, both on the field uh, uh, and through the profession, you know, here we are now working back together, you know, like you said, 30, 30 years later. And, uh, and, and that's a really cool thing about football that you love, you know, that it brings people from all different uh, walks of life together. And you know, it's a unifier, um, it's a connector, and um, having... Uh, the amount of players, former players on our staff, uh, I've lost count. I know it's, you know, around 20 uh, plus former players that are on our staff in different uh, parts of our, our program. And uh, Kale's a great example. Uh, and again, we, of course, we have four of the five guys on offense that all played at Oklahoma and uh, they deserve to be here. They're not, you know, in, inherently uh, deserve to be here. You, it's because you're, uh, you're talented. Uh, you know, you, you're about the right stuff, you know, and they've all earned the right to be here. But uh, Kel's a great example, and we know uh, what he's meant to this place and what this place means to him, too. It's a, you know, it's a two-way street. And, uh, but, he, he, you know, nobody's more passionate uh, about uh, this place and the success and uh, what it's meant to him than Kel Gundy. Okay, James Hill, front row. No, Brent, it, um, I think it was... Big 12 media days, you brought up Gavin and Jaden, guys that could really run. I think you guys have tested lately. Uh, you don't have, what's your overall thought of your overall team speed in your football team? Yeah. I think it's good. You know, we got good speed, um, that skill across the board. We got big guys that can run. You know, I like our team speed. And um, you want to see if they can play fast too. And, and so we'll see, you know, when uh, we start you know, uh, playing this fall, but, uh, you know, sometimes guys run fast, but they don't play fast. Sometimes guys don't maybe test well, but they run really fast. So, uh, you know, game speed is important and you want to be able to play, uh, you know, have guys that can take the top off, you know, a defense on offense and guys that can get to the football, you know, and we want to, our guys defense will be, you know, fast and physical and on offense, man, we want to be able to run, run by people. And I believe that we have that, you know, personnel-wise. Right side, Eli Larkin. Right, you've spoken plenty about Jerry Schmidt since you've come back here, but as, as that position of strength coach has evolved uh, maybe over the last decade, I'm curious how rare and maybe how much of an advantage is his combination of old school and obviously intense, but seemingly able to connect with a lot of these young people and, and particularly on the, on the mental side. Yeah, and I don't know if it's any different now than it was however long just to go all the way back whatever go all the way back 100 year, years i think that you know that position has always you know been valued for developing toughness certainly getting your guys in shape and getting them stronger and um, getting them to buy into um you know uh the value of you know weight room and nutrition and and now you know all the other areas of a player wellness, elite recovery, and sports science, things of that nature, tying all that together. Uh, but he's incredibly important. He and his staff, and he's only one person. Um, he's got to be the leader of it, but he's got to have a staff too uh, that can serve the players in all the right ways. And so, whether that's position specific, or again, you know, uh, you know, uh, challenging uh, and taking guys to some tough, uh, dark places. 
Um, you know, Jerry's uh, been amazing. And so uh, he's up to this point, he's had the same kind of impact that he had uh, when we all got here in 1999. Uh, he has a way, a very unique way uh, of, you know, always raising the standard and keeping guys uh, uneasy and not allowing them to get comfortable. And uh, but our guys have bought into that in a very short amount of time. I think uh, the former player uh, testimonials have, um, you know, helped make that easier. Uh, and um, you know, guys got great respect for him. He he he's uh, tough on them, uh, but he's fair, um, incredibly demanding, and uh, never satisfied. And he's always at ten every day. And uh, so I've got. Uh, great appreciation uh, for he and his staff and again the uh, uh, you know he's an additional uh, um, you know layer of support and um, kind of a, a guiding principle for what we want to be as a program he he takes everything that we're talking about programmatically and, and incorporates it into what they're doing whether it's uh, certain things how we say things or you know what our standards are things of that nature and he creates a lot of buy-in uh, so um, I love everything you know uh, that we've seen so far from him, and I think that again the players will be the the best ones that'll uh, be able to you know testify to their own experiences. But I've seen a lot of growth and maturing, and again hunger to uh, you know uh, to meet standards, I and mean, that's what it's all about. So your linebacker room. Pretty deep, got a lot of uh, experience in it with Uwegu, White, several others. Can you talk about just their overall, I guess, growth and leadership uh, from January to now? Yeah, I think, uh, again, you could, we've had great buy in. Um, the guys are, are hungry, uh, you know, to improve and, and get better. Uh, to they've, I think we have a very strong, clear understanding that uh, they've got to. For me, again, it's easy for me to say I'm a linebackers coach, but they've got to be the, the liaison to make it all happen, getting guys lined up, making checks. And there's a lot of other people that, that have to do some of those things as well. But everything goes through them. They're the quarterback of the defense. That unit is, and they need to be the heart and soul of our team if we're going to be worth a flip, and uh, certainly of our defense. Um, they've always been a, a liaison for me as a defensive coordinator to get everything done that you want to get done. And, uh, you know, both up front and the back end. So uh, they're the ones that uh, we're gonna, really going to lean hard on. Um, I've seen, again, a lot of uh, maturing and, you know, improvement. Uh, my expectation is that'll continue to happen during the course of the season uh, through some strain and some tough moments. Um, but working with them uh, along with Coach Roof yesterday, man, I was, God, we got a lot better. Um, with the things that we're asking them to do um, fundamentally and some drill work and just they're moving around uh, from top to bottom, you know, from, you know, seniors to freshmen uh, with a lot of confidence in the things that we were asking them to do that, you know, to be honest, in the, in the spring when we started, um, uh, it was um, not where we needed it to be by, by any stretch. So um, uh, excited about, you know, that, but, Again, guys really want to lead, and they're straining to do all the little things right and to please, and and uh, they want to be a great unit. And, uh, and they have great awareness. They've taken action, and they've accepted accountability. That's how you create change and uh, through those, those uh, three areas. And uh, it takes a lot of humility to have that awareness uh, where you stand up and, and just admit, like, I'm not where I need to be, but I'm willing to go where I need to go. It's like taking the action. And putting in the work, and then and then the accountability that goes along with that through the growth process. And sometimes that's not fun, but it's it's all part of it. So, not where we need to be. And, and again, I don't see a, a ton of uh, quote unquote experience. Uh, and um, but um, we got. Um, I like our group of guys. Uh, I think that as we grow and mature and continue to improve, if we keep doing what we've done since the beginning of. Uh, mat drills, um, we're going to be exactly where we need to be, you know, as the season progresses. Time for one or two more. Right here. Uh, Coach Venables, we'll talk about your relationship with uh, uh, Coach Chavis and how he's grown since January as a first-time position, uh, position coach. Yeah, again, I don't 
look at him the first time because he's, he's been coaching uh, for a long time and uh, we've worked together for you know several years and, and uh, I've, I've known what he can do that's why we uh, you know he's one of the first hires we had and uh, he's mature beyond his years uh, terrific around the players uh, you know uh, you all see a lot of the fun stuff but he's, he's tough and he's demanding uh, and he gets the most out of his guys. Um, he's very accountable, uh, and uh, he has a unique way in how he relates to to people, um, whether they're, you know, seventy five years old or you know they're you know sixteen. You know, he's just got a unique way. Effective communicator, great motivator. Uh, he's very passionate uh, and intense. Uh, super uh, uh, smart. Um, really technically sound and how he uh, progressively teaches uh, the game and uh, understands uh, our system inside and out really for a defensive line coach he he got a great understanding of the back end as well as the front end so uh, you know and then I've seen him be exactly who I I knew he was going to be he helped uh, through some different situations where he had to actually coach uh, at Clemson through COVID and some stuff like that so uh, he's had his opportunities there, but uh, sat in the uh, you know the defensive staff room with him for a long time, and uh, so everything I've seen is just really confirmation for what I already knew uh, he was about, both on the field, uh, in the staff room, uh, and recruiting uh, with our uh, our players, you know. Uh, so I think everybody else you know has been exposed to it, but. He's not the only one in college football. That happens around the country. We're just kind of centered on, on this here. Uh, and, you know, I don't need anybody else to, uh, you know, sign off on whether or not the guy can, can coach and recruit and be a great teammate and have a lot of depth, to, you know, from a knowledge standpoint. I know, you know, what he can do. And I wouldn't have done it if I, if I was unsure or if he was just a great recruiter. Uh, you know, that's not – you got to be able to bring all. I don't want to have to hide your weaknesses. You know, you, you're going to show up here. You know, you're going to be able to uh, do well in all those areas. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.